this one we have a complaint of a evaporator fan motor not working and they say it's also iced up and you can see it in the drain pan the drain pan's all frosted up so i'm going to get this guy shut off on the roof and let it defrost and i'm going to get some hoses and we'll get this thing all taken care of looks like we're definitely gonna have to change a motor so always want to put a drip loop coming out the hose because they always leak and if you don't it'll trail down the hose and leak all over the floor and then as i've showed in other videos try to tuck it back in where it's out of the way try to be nice to the customer don't make a mess i imagine this is part of the problem i went to go get my hoses and i come back and this door is wide open and it's not shutting on its own so we're gonna have to give them a price quote for some self-closing hinges and a new door closure and a latch but we're gonna get this thing defrosted now this is my condensing unit right here they used to have an old rack and uh they had a multiplex condensing unit that had uh, multiple compressors running uh, everything. And they didn't like the way that it was running and it was costing them too much money so they had to pull everything out of the rack. It was a parallel configuration. So, so now we got individual guys, which actually works out a little bit better because when they lose a compressor they don't lose everything. So we're going to get this guy shut off on the right, that's our beer walk-in, we'll get it shut off and then we'll get de-icing on that coil. You know, other than it being hot as hell out here, out in the Palm Springs or Coachella Valley, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, at least the views are nice. You know, you get the mountains in the background. You got Yucca Valley, Joshua Tree, 29 Palms, all on the other side of that mountain range right there. It is pretty nice out here, it's just too freaking hot. So that's a nice block of ice. So it looks like it's just been a bad motor for a while, but we're still gonna test the thermostat. I also don't like those thermostats. That's the little thermostat right there. But anyways, we're gonna get this defrosted, clean the coil, and then check everything out. So we've got the unit all defrosted. Now I'm just changing the blade. I put that one back in, or changing the motor. That one's fine. Remember like I've said in previous videos, 3 8 and 11 32 is the two most common size for these little nuts to hold these guys on. So this one's 3 8 so my 11 and one happens to have a 3 8 on one end. And then 11 32 is the, the other most common size that you'll use. So you keep those in your bags if you're doing a lot of walk-in work that has the old shaded pole and or PSC motors. They all kind of have this configuration where they get hooked up. And I keep a, a large amount, I mean I, I keep a pretty good truck stock of these motors. I usually keep 215 volt clockwise motors and usually two 208 volt clockwise motors in my truck because I use them a lot. Um, I know that the uh, 9721 will work because it's a dual voltage. But I really don't care for using the 9721 in an evaporator situation because that, and if you don't know, that's the universal motor. It's, you know, this frame size, diameter, everything, but it can be 115 or 208. Um, I just don't like all those wires. Plus it has a capacitor hanging off of it and I just don't like all the extra wires dangling there in the evaporator. It just looks like a mess to me. So I prefer to stick with the standard or putting in a normal uh, you know, single voltage PSC motor in there. Uh, they also make those uh, universal ECM watt motors. Those things are badass because you can, uh, you can go between 208 or 115. Uh, I was turned on to those by, I think it was Joshua Monk. He told me about them for like supermarket use. And um, yeah, those things are really cool because they've saved my ass a few times, being that they're 115 or 208, but they only have two wires coming off of them, so you don't got to do any magic. And they're uh, ECM, and they're the size of a watt motor. I think they'll replace a 6 watt all the way to a 25 watt, but they're the size of a 9 watt. 
so it's perfect. You can fit them into even like on a little reach-in cooler, you can fit them in there. Really nice motors. We are back on and running. I de-iced the coil. One thing I want to point out is I shut off the condensing unit on the roof, okay, um, instead of adjusting the thermostat. And the reason why I did that was because I want to test this thermostat. So I haven't touched the thermostat yet. I de-iced it. Now I'm going to go turn the condensing unit on and I'm going to watch that thermostat satisfy me. Turn on and turn off and let me know if that thermostat is working properly. Okay, that's a way you can test it. Now there is occasions where I'll go in there and just twist on the thermostat uh, in a situation where I'm confident it was working okay. But in this one, I really don't like that thermostat. I don't like that style and uh, I don't trust it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I haven't touched the thermostat at all. All I did was shut off the condensing unit on the roof and then shut off that power switch so that now we can just test it. One of the things that I forgot to mention is, is you always need to check your expansion valve because I did have to de-ice over here too. There was a big clump of ice built up around that valve and it's hard to tell just from looking at the evaporator. So when you're de-icing these evaporators on a walk-in freezer or a walk-in cooler, you need to make sure you look at the expansion valve section too. So everything's checking out okay. I went ahead and uh, marked the defrost timer and turned on a stopwatch and made sure that it tracked. It actually kept time, it did. It went, actually cycled through a defrost. Uh, refrigerant pressures are looking good, sight glass is clear. So it's just a matter of waiting for the box to come down to temperature now. I have to say that, in my opinion, these Tecumseh pre-built units are the best condensing units out there as far as functionality and the accessories they come with. One thing that I really appreciate is their receivers are plenty big enough for outdoor, you know, 50 to 75 foot line sets. This is only like a I think this is a 7 8 horsepower, so this isn't even a 1 horsepower or something like that. I'd have to look and see, but I think. But anyways, look at how big that receiver is. I love that. They come factory installed with suction dryers, liquid dryers, sight glasses. These things are nice, and you can get even more fancy bells and whistles on them. The only thing I don't like about them is, is the, the panels. You know, it's a bunch of 7 16 screws that come off, but other than that, man, these things are great little units. They seem to last very well good stuff okay so we had a walk-in cooler it was a beer walk-in that their complaint was that they had a bad fan motor uh, when I arrived I found that the unit was actually iced up uh, defrosted it went through all operations of the unit didn't find anything wrong the temperature controller was turning on and off where it should be uh, refrigerant pressures were great sight glass was clear time clock was keeping time uh, the one thing I did find was that the walk-in door does not close by itself. Uh, has both bad hinges and a bad door closure. So I went ahead and submitted a quote to replace the door closure and door hinges on the walk-in cooler door. And we'll see what they say. Other than that, everything else checked out okay.